Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. Uh, gosh, listen, just the other night I shared a video on Patreon, actually about two or three days ago. And I was actually going to make that, that particular video public, but we're going to kind of go into a subject very similar uh, about praying, praying in your closet. Uh, more specifically, I'm going to be talking about Matthew chapter 6, verse 21 here. But it's going to encompass the information I shared over there. Of course, I go into a testimonial, which is a little bit something I won't go into over here. But, uh, but so if you want to catch the broadcast we did on Patreon. But the, the teaching aspect of it, we're about to go in tonight. And I really believe this is going to be an eye-opener for many of you. And uh, again, like I said, I'm going to focus here, Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now, if you look at the Hebrew Matthew on this, uh, again, let's see, going back to verse uh, 21, I want to drop down there with you here, in the place where your treasure is, there will be your heart. Now, what kind of inspired me to run down this one here was uh, uh, one of the Egyptian documents where that the is, is uses the, the, the quoting basically the exact same verse, but it says, "Where your mind is, uh, there you will find the treasure." And Again, though, like I said, it's actually going into this same verbiage. And so when I saw that, immediately I came back to the scriptures and I began to look at this. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We know also Proverbs. Uh, we have in Proverbs, uh, you know, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. But actually in the Hebrew part of the Proverbs, it doesn't say uh, about the heart, okay? It just simply says, it's actually using the word soul, all right? And uh, let's see, Proverbs 23, I'm in the wrong verse. Here we go, right here. Verse 7 it is, it's not verse 6, it's verse 7. For as one that uh, hath reckoned within himself, so is he. It actually doesn't even say that either. It says, ki kamo sha'ar benefesho, all right? That is for or for as okay sha'a is one that opens up something that is within his soul benefesho right there kin who that does mean so is he or yes he is so in other words whatever is really in the soul that's what that person is all right now you would think if, if it was taken the idea of what we have in english here for as he thinketh in his heart so is he that would be similar to what we're looking at over here in Matthew's gospel here. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. But when you really begin to look at this whole chapter here, we're finding out that it's about prayer. All right. When you pray, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, right? Uh, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. All right, let me cut to the chase real quick before we get started because I don't want to lose anybody that's listening in here. What we are seeing and what we're about to discover here is when you really begin to sincerely pray, Jesus is teaching you about prayer, that your prayer life is like a vision. It is, it is, you are able to pray to such a depth that you are in vision. And the more that your heart is on, uh, whatever your heart really is on, is where you go, if that makes sense. Uh, in other words, when our minds and our thoughts are constantly on the cares and the things of the world, your prayer doesn't leave earth. You're stuck here on this earth. But when you really begin to sincerely, you have your mind on, on Christ daily. You're thinking about him. He becomes your treasure. He becomes the most important thing to you there is on this planet. Then when you begin to go into prayer, where your heart is, that's where the treasure is. In other words, that's where the reward is going to be. 
And this is why Jesus, from the very beginning of the chapter, take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have your reward of your, uh, otherwise, excuse me, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Why? Because they're so caught up with men pleasing, being seen, being heard. You know, oh, I do this. Oh, I pray. I fast. I do, you know, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. There, That's your reward. Therefore, when thou do, do, do your alms, your giving, sound not a trumpet before, uh, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men. Verily I send to you, they have their reward. So when you give, you, do, you donate, you want to give to someone, you want to bless someone, do it secretly. No wonder why the scripture says, let not your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Okay. Do it secretly. But when you do alms, let not, well, there it is. <laughs> let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, right? I didn't realize it was actually there. Sorry about that. Uh, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward you openly. So when you're going to bless someone, don't sound a trumpet about it. Just do it. And when you pray, you shall not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray and standing in the synagogues and the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, enter into your closet. And when you have shut the door, pray to your Father which is in secret, and thy Father which sees in secret shall reward you openly. Now, I took everybody when I did it over on, the, uh, on, on Patreon I took you into that same scripture there and I was showing you what it says in the Hebrew language here. Let's see. Let me see. We'll get back over here where we're at. Verse six. Okay. But you, when you pray, go to your couch, close your doors upon you and pray to your father in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward, will reward you. Now, I think the doors may be your eyelids. Uh, I'm not sure. But it's basically you go and you lay down. You know, it's almost like when you pray, when you get, when you sit, when you really, and, and I know this from experience, when you really begin to pray in a meditative state, when I say meditative, in other words, you're so sincere, you're so, you know, even whether you're doing it with your eyes closed or whatever, however you may be doing this. And, and I used to stand in my closet and pray and stuff. That was one of the things I always felt passionate about with standing and praying. But in this case here, he's telling you to go lay down and do it. And I've done both ways. But when you begin to pray like that, you can literally, by faith, you can, it's almost like wherever your heart is. In other words, when your heart is truly in tune with Christ, you will go in his presence. And, and, I, and I've shared a testimony before, and I don't know if I've done it here or not, but I, but I remember one time I, I went in to go to the closet to pray. And at that time, I used to think that you had to go physically into the closet. I hadn't looked, I hadn't seen this one here before, but I went into the closet and as I was praying, as I walked into the closet and I began to pray, I immediately, I had the faith in my heart was I was going in the presence of Almighty God and I literally went in the presence of of Jesus Christ. Where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. So in other words, as you begin to really begin to pray in that regards, you literally, it brings you to the presence of where you are. Like I said, so many people are so earthbound, they can't get beyond the earth issues. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not therefore like unto them, for your Father knows what things you have need of before you ask Him. So in other words, when you begin to pray and everything, you know, I mean, basically, He's, he's letting you know, because like I said, we're going to get down to that verse in a moment, where your treasure is, there, that's where your, or where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. So if you're only worried about the cares of this life, then when you go to pray, you're still earthly bound. You don't get beyond earth's realm. You, you, you're still stuck in a cycle here. 
But he says right there, your father already knows what you have need of before you even ask him. So it's not like you have to go and ask God, you know, well, the car's broke down. Lord, would you fix the car and everything? No, get, get in love with Jesus Christ. Have it to where, you know, your desire is, is Father, I, 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 want to, I want to know the hidden things. I want to know, you know, I want to know the, the, the great things that you have in store for us. What will you reveal to my heart today? You know, it, it needs to be truly a romantic relationship, right? He goes on to say, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. And this is the basic part. So it's almost like, and I never really thought about it before. Maybe we should just do the Lord's Prayer when we enter our closet first, setting that stage, right? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Sanctify your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And I don't think he's talking about the daily bread as in the physical carnal food. And I say that because Jesus said, except you drink my blood and eat my flesh, you have no life in you. He didn't explain it either, did he? He is the manna. He is his, he is the very word of life. Give us this day our daily bread. I can't help but wonder if that's not a deeper, more intimate meaning behind that. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In other words, somebody's done wrong to you, they've done evil to you, go, get that out of the way. Make sure everything's clear, clean. You don't, you don't want to go before God and know that you, you've, you've offended someone, you've hurt someone. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That one's provocative in itself because he's told you to enter into your closet. We've read a little bit further down in just a moment where he says where your heart is or where your, uh, your, your heart is, that's where your treasure is. So when he says, lead us not into temptation, in other words, when you go to pray like that, you literally could pray to a place where you will go into a vision where you literally will go into the presence of Almighty God. The last place you want to go is into a place of temptation and you don't want to be in the presence of evil. So deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And if you forgive men their trespasses, your father will for also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive you your trespasses. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you that they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, that you appear not unto men to fast, but unto the Father which is in secret, and thy Father which sees in secret shall reward you openly. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through to steal. But lay up yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Okay, this Friends, this is, this is what I'm talking about here. This is going deep. This is going beyond that. It's, when we're reading this, don't look at this with, a, with the face value of, you know, well, in a way it is face value too. You don't, want to, uh, you, you don't want to lay up for yourselves treasures upon the earth. In other words, the more that you have of the material side of this world, the more distractions it is for you to be able to break through in the spirit and pray to a place to where you are in vision before God, where he can reveal himself to you in such a way that, that, that the word of God becomes lively to you. That it becomes a living revelation. Remember when Jesus says, the works that I do, you'll do also greater than this because I go unto my Father. We don't need to be living in an earthly plane. We need to live above that. We need to live in a spiritual plane, in a, in a heavenly place. He would often resort and go off into the wilderness alone to pray. 
You know, think about it. I mean, even in the case of Elijah, Elisha, when he's dealing with Gehazi, he goes like this. He says, you know, he's worried about the armies coming against him and they're about to be defeated in battle. And suddenly Elisha says, Lord, open that boy's eyes. There's more with us than there are with them. And when he opened his eyes, he saw chariots of fire and everything and all the angels gathered around. That's getting into prayer. That's getting into where your heart is. That's where your treasure is. There are unsearchable, unfathomable riches of treasures of knowledge and understanding and great revelations that God would have for us beyond anything that our heart could ever imagine when we begin to focus our heart and mind like that and not building our treasures here, but building rather our treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal because they cannot rob that from you. So he says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. And if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. I don't know. I hope by God's grace somehow or another that I've made this simple enough for you. But I know that when we really pray, like this, when we really seek God like this. First off, I think the key to it is, is verse 21, for where your treasure is. And as I said, in the, in the book, in the Egyptian writings, where your mind is, there is your reward. There is your treasure. When your mind and your thoughts are on Him, then the reward is unbelievable. It reminds me of the, the sister I shared that testimony with you guys at one time that she tells me about, you know, I'm sitting there and she says, you know, one day I was sitting here, I was thinking about Jesus and she said, and the angel of the Lord walked into my room and said, would you like to go where he lives? And, you know, what a beautiful testimony. I mean, her mind, her heart was so in love with Jesus Christ that it caused the angel of God to come down and take her by the hand. And he said, just close your eyes. And when the next thing you know, he said, open your eyes. She said, and she was back and she looked down. She could see earth and she saw a woman there on the earth. And she said, yet even though I was so far out, yet I could see her. And she said, and suddenly I knew every freckle that was on her face. And then she said, the next thing I knew, she said, I knew the number of the freckles and the number of the hairs on her head. And she said, and the angel said, remember what Jesus said? Even the hairs of your very head are numbered. And then he said, close your eyes again. And when she did, she said, the next thing she knows, she was in a world where the trees were alive, the rocks were alive, and they would all praise the Lord. Even the rocks, she said, the big rocks would sing in a deep voice. The little rocks would have a high-pitched voice. She said, the leaves of the trees would just clap their little leaves together, praising the Lord. And I sit there and I think to myself, what a treasure. Now I begin to understand now why God wrote what he did here in this passage here in Matthew chapter 6. Where your heart is, or where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. He puts it that way there because he's letting you know if you've only built your treasures in earthly carnal things, it's because your heart wasn't there in the right place to begin with. Let's Let's make that promise to the Father that we're, if, we, if we've been guilty of that, we're going to reverse it because we want our minds on Christ. Let that mind that was in Christ be also in you. Remember the scripture on that? Also, too, don't forget, friends, Odyssey. Uh, Odyssey.com. Yana's channel there on Odyssey.com. She is still loading up more and more videos. She's got a new one up over here as well. Uh, and when you click on her channel, her channel there, let's see, uh, in order for me to get there the right way, let me just...
pull it up here. I know it's Odyssey. Uh, my channel, there we go. Let's try it that way there. Israeli News Live uh, forward slash Yana. Uh, she's got 1,200 followers now there, but uh, definitely we need to get more people over there. She just did a, a video called Talmudic Law of Gender Segregation uh, Gaining there. Uh, something you want to check out. Uh, she did a wonderful interview the other day. I won't name the name of that video there, but you can see it. It's also over on iConnectFX.com. Uh, but dude, join up over there, go in there, check out the videos that she's doing. Like I said, exclusive content. Uh, our case also there uh, with Mede there. You can, you can see that video on her channel as well. Uh, we do have a website up and coming very soon. Uh, that's going more into that information. Uh, I'm not sure if that's, but I know any day now it'll actually go public there too. So hopefully you'll be able to get to see that. Uh, but, uh, and then also too, when you go to Yana's channel, when you click on one of her videos there, be sure to, uh, you've Good got evening, the, this is Yana. you've got the notification bell there. Click on that notification bell and subscribe there. Uh, and I think too, I think you're able to support her as well on that channel there. But uh, let's see here, not sure. Oh, there we go, right there, right there under the video there. Support this content if you want to be able to do that as well. Again, anyway, you can also visit us, IsraeliNewsLive.org, our website there, and our website there, you can also donate online if God so leads you to do so. Anyway, thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, and I guess my website's not gonna pop up for me while we're doing this, but that's all right. Anyway, you can see it above the, on the screen there as well as our mailing address there in uh, Sunbright, Tennessee, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872.